Good evening and welcome to the Whiskey Lover Society with me, Gert Tief. And tonight we are doing the last in the Klein Friedrich travel collection. Um, as a quick reminder, we have done the vintage cost, we have done the reserve cost, and I will also put the link um, over here um, so that you can go have a look at um, the previous reviews on the free selections and tonight we are looking at the select cost so i've poured it already uh, very light in color i like the green label but again as the previous um, bottles i do understand it's a small label so it's not always possible to make it quite readable this one was also for me quite impossible to read. I had to get a magnifier out because of the contrast between the blue and the gold. It's not easy to read, but I did find some information. And I also know that in a big bottle, which will come in a one liter bottle at the uh, travel retail, I'm sure it will be much easier to read them. So tonight we are looking at the select cost. And um, it is a single malt scotch whiskey, bottled at 40% ABV. And um, I'm going to have to quote, it comes from European casks, um, also from ex-bourbon casks. And um, I presume that would have been ex-American oak. And they will also be use some ex-red wine cask, which I presume can be either European oak or it can also be American oak. And when they finish up uh, or marry the casks together and then in a Solera vat, bottled at 40% ABV. I also saw um, that they do add some color, coloring to it. Um, of course, at 40% ABV, it is probably chill filtered. But if I did add color, they didn't really add a lot to it. As you can see from the dram that I poured um, maybe 15 minutes ago to give it a little bit of air. Um, quite light amber color, maybe a little bit of a light gold color. So, um, cost around 50 euros. Um, I actually saw this uh, two weeks ago at uh, the Vienna uh, International Airport. So 50 liters, around just under 50 liters for a one liter bottle. And um, I will put a link in the description also so that you can go look um, at what other whiskies we had at the, at the airport. And uh, be prepared, you are going to be shocked at the incredibly high prices that they are charging for whiskey at a duty-free shop. But uh, I digress. So this whiskey tonight on the nose. Cheers. Well, well, well the first thing that I have to tell you, when you pour these ones, uh, and I've seen it with all three of them, give it a five or ten minutes in a glass just to get a little bit of oxygen in them because that does change the nose quite dramatically. So on this one, I love it. I, I really love it. And um, it's a real space side type of nose coming out. The fruity nose. I do get a little bit of the apples, a little bit of a pear note light fruit salad type of nose coming out a hint of a citrus note a little bit of an apple cider really fantastic i i do like it it reminds me quite a lot like a, a glen cadam series but also uh, from the space side quite similar to that so very light apples pears fruit really fantastic i also get a little bit of a in south africa we have some nice muscadel um, dessert wine so that sweetie sweet sticky um, 
dessert wine is quite similar to that as well. A little bit of the, the sweetness is there and a little bit of a brown sugar note. And then of course I also get a little bit of a honey, a light honey note, which I was surprised that to find this, but it reminds me of a little bit of a honey sweetness. Vanilla, and I think that comes from the bourbon, uh, ex-bourbon cars, so there's a little bit of uh, vanilla still left when it, by the time it arrives here in Europe. Also reminds me a little bit of a sticky toffee pudding. So quite sweet on the nose. And I also get a little bit of a orange peel oil. You know, when you make a, uh, a Negroni or you make a old fashioned, you take an orange peel and give it a twist and that burst of the oils in the, on the rim of the glass, I get that little hint of uh, uh, the oiliness. It's supposed to be in red, ex-red wine cast. I don't get any red wine. Um, no, nothing, nothing that reminds me even of a red wine. Uh, so I don't get that. Well, I, it is really nice. I could sit for hours just by nosing it. And maybe also I'm sometimes scared that the nose is not going to be reflecting in the taste. So I keep on nosing it and uh, just hoping, oh, please, just just give me half of the things that I smell. And in the end, when I drink it, I'm so disappointed. So I really hope that I'm not going to be disappointed in this one. So on the taste, cheers. Well, the first, first, first sip didn't disappoint. So I do get the nice soft sweetness. I do get a little bit of the apple note. Even on the second sip, the alcohol is there. There's a little bit of a tingle a little bit of a peppery note, um, but it's not overwhelming. I will definitely not add any water to this one. I do get a little bit of oak coming in now, but it's quite balanced between the, the sweetness and the oakiness. It's more for me like a little bit of a espresso with a hint of milk in it, so it's not that bitter and maybe a little couple of grains of sugar just to take the edge of the bitterness away. Quite pleasant. So the oak doesn't really build up. The, for the previous ones, um, I did get a little bit of a build up of oak. Every sip it was a little bit more, a little bit more until it got to be a little bit too much for my taste. This one, I don't get that. Um, it's a, it's quite a flat oak, and um, and it's now a little balance between the sweetness and the oakiness. Quite pleasant actually. Now I also get a little bit of a vanilla note uh, coming out, and I also get a little bit of a caramel note coming out. Just to make sure. Yeah, this is fantastic. So my thoughts on this one. I like the sweetness. I like the light fruity notes. Well, I love the fruity notes. I like the, the, the vanilla in it. I like the little bit of a raisiny note coming out. I like the little bit of a honey note coming out. The nose is fantastic and I think that's the first thing that draws me into the whiskey is of course is the nose and then um, not all the flavors translated to the taste but I like the fact that I did not get the over I was not overwhelmed by the oak and I'd still get a lightness in the taste as well. So the finish medium 
Um, I do get um, the, the fruity flavors. I get a little bit of a caramel flavors. Quite pleasant. So will I recommend it? Absolutely. Between the three of them, um, I was thinking of making a uh, quick short video by comparing all three in the end. But I think I'm not going to do that. Or maybe I will do that at a later stage. But at this stage, I think by my face and by my happiness and my smiles, um, I think we all know who's going to be the winner in that contest. So, um, fantastic one. I would definitely recommend it. Um, $50, uh, 50 euros for a, a one liter. I'm sure if you try and you see a, a little bit uh, cheaper one, give it a try. Also, if you are not really sure, do like the same, buy the small sample bottles, just to make sure that you are um, willing to spend 50 euros for a bottle. And if you want to pull the trigger, of course, it's going to be fantastic. So score-wise, I am very happy with this one, and I'm going to give this a generous 85 out of 100, um, which is quite up there for me. And it makes me happy to drink it, even at 40% ABV. I would have loved to try this one at 46% ABV. I think that is going to be freaking awesome. So, very happy with it. Um, definitely, uh, as soon as I get onto the aircraft the next time and I go past a nice duty-free shop, I will definitely stop and buy a full bottle and keep it on the shelf. So, thank you very much for watching. As usual, please remember to like and subscribe, or don't like, but, but do subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell me what is your thoughts on the Glenfree series. Um, I do know they have quite a lot of bottles. And of course, if you want to recommend something for me, please leave it in the comment and I will see if I can actually buy it. So, cheers. See you next time.